One of the things that I always like to talk to women before I start my little questions is the fact, ladies, that we are very well endowed. We have boobs, we have hips, we have legs, and we look good. We do, we do. But we have to be very careful when we come to church, when we go to work or anything else, because you see, men are visual. You know, they don't look. Men see everything. My husband was in Africa, and as he was sitting on the pulpit, one of the ladies, in fact, his pastor's wife, was sitting out there, and he started crying, and she took her boob out oh and started feeding her child. <laughs> My husband called me last night and said, I saw a boob. <laughs> he said, honey, it was right before my eyes. I couldn't, the more I tried not to look at it, the more I looked at it. And it's hard for men, it's hard for men. See, over there a boob doesn't mean anything. Yeah. They see boobs all the time, but not here. So that's why you have to be careful when you come out to church, you gotta be careful that you don't see that little cleavage. Because mm -hmm. men are They look at it and they go, especially down the pulpit. Sometimes I just just feel so sorry for my husband. Because you know, especially when they have praise team. Remember, you know what I'm talking about. And they stand right in front of the pastor Hello. and they be going. <laughs>
there were words so many hearings that I didn't know who was a member, who wasn't a member. And I said to my husband, hey, now I still got so many visitors. <laughs> and the pastor said, And we were in one church, and it's a group of ministers. And this lady, she came from the back, and was, the pastor was already speaking. She walked down now, she had a split that went down to here. Mm -hmm. And it was a white dress. You know what white does, right? Mm -hmm. You can see right through it. Yes. Mm -hmm. And she just cried. <laughs> and the pastor stopped preaching. Mm -hmm. And he said, Church, we gotta help each other out. Because mm -hmm. sometimes the devil doesn't want you to hear what the Lord wants you to hear. So remember, you are God's tender plan. You're this woman. We're special. Mm -hmm. And when we come to church, we are here to see the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And I, I'm a very visual, you know, visual person. I see the Lord sitting in the front pew every day, every Sabbath. He's just enjoying. When I sing, I sing to him. Amen. If you want to join him, great. But I sing to him. And remember, he loves you. And help these men. Yes. They can't help it. Yes. They're so pathetic. They're <laughs> They can't help it. Well, so help them. Amen. <laughs> Take what I say as something loving to you. I'm not reprimanding you or anything. I just see things and so do that for the Lord. Will you? Amen. Thank you. Okay. There are some important issues that men and women don't understand about each other. First of all, men are visual, just like I told you. And men are quick. We're like conventional ovens. We gotta be warmed up. Men are like microwaves. <laughs> I asked my husband one time, honey, what does it take for a man to get ready to have sex with a woman? And he said, just show up. <laughs> and it's true. And this is why I tell my young ladies, my married ladies, and my old ladies, because I'm old ladies, are getting a little active too. You have to guard yourself. You have to guard yourself. Don't let any Tom, Dick, and Harry tell you what a wonderful person you are, and especially if they're not in the church. A boy that like the plague. Christ is coming too soon. You attach yourself to somebody that's not believing like you're believing, you're headed for trouble. And if you're already there, and you've already been married, and you're married to somebody who's not an Adventist, or who doesn't believe like you, God still loves you more than you could ever love him. You just keep the faith and you be strong. Because I've seen it where men have come because of their wives' faithfulness have accepted the Lord. So you be faithful. Now one lady said to me, my sister Griffith, my husband loves, loves pork chops. What do I do? You fix in his pork chops. You fix in his pork chops. And slowly, you don't have to eat him, but he's your husband. Give him that respect. Do you understand what I'm saying? You give him that respect. And then you can sit down with him and say, honey, I just can't. I just can't picture this part of it. I just can't do it. So please forgive me if I don't fix him the way. Peter, what is that? Okay, so. Um, if you've ever been married, what, well, most of us here are, what are the things that are most important to you? Have you ever asked your spouse that? What's important to you? Have you posed that question? How did you respond after gaining that information? And do you consider this information vital to your marriage? Why or why not? And if you haven't, why not? So have you asked your husband? What's important to you? Have you done that? Has anyone done that? Mm -hmm. You have? Great. You need to ask your husband, what is the thing that you need the most? When you ask 
asked her husband that. Women have needs, men have needs. A woman's top need is usually affection. You are the daddy's You are the Right? Affection. What do you think a man's number one need is? Respect. Respect. It's not sex. It's respect. Now, do you understand what that means when it comes to your husband? Respect. Have you asked him? Does he understand you when you tell him that your number one is affection? Have you explained it to him? See, this is the problem that we have, husbands and wives, is that we kind of play games. They should know what I mean, or I should know what I mean. They should know I am. <coughs> they don't know, and you don't know. So one of the things we're going to do today is talk about what do you think a man means when he says respect. Talk to me. What do you think he means? Don't override his rules. Don't override his rules. Are they his rules or your both rules? Your both. Okay. okay. One of the things you have to be careful in coming from a culture like mine, and I come from Puerto Rico, my dad made all the rules. Mom didn't have anything to say. And so I thought, hmm, I'm never going to get married for that. <laughs> I talk too much. I've never gone down there. I'll be divorced in two years. So what does that mean, respect? Not going over his rules. Okay, what else? Listen. Listening? Is that what you said? Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Listening? Honest. Honesty, okay. So he wants you to be honest with him. Is that what you're saying to me? Okay. Consulting with him. Uh -huh. In what? things like that. But if I want to buy me a blouse, do I have to ask my husband's permission? No. 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 Furniture and things like that. Who does make that last decision? Both. Ah, oh, so not the husband. Well, the way the way Brian and I have done it, because as you guys know, I, I speak my mind very loudly. But we have a challenge in our marriage because we're both the eldest child, and um, and I got a feeling we're both coming. Yeah, but I'm the stronger player. <laughs> But I had to really learn that while we could both voice our opinions about a, a decision, he is the man of the house and he gets the final word. And I have, and my our rule is I abide by that. And it's worked very well because he's not going to make a decision if I really, really, really don't want it, and he still wants to make me happy. Then he might sway my way. Or maybe it's not because he's the more level-headed one, and I respect that too. So if there's a decision that he makes, and I don't necessarily am 100% happy, but I know that he is more level-headed than me, so I... I remember years ago, my husband wanted to buy tires, but I, but these were those humongo tires. Do you remember years ago? I don't know, maybe I'm too old, and some people are too young. But they used to have these tires that they would buy make the car go up in the air, right. you know. And so my husband decided, 
he wanted those tires. And I said, oh, I don't need those, those tires. We got good tires on the car. He said, I don't really like those tires. And I said, why? Why? He said, well, everybody else is getting them tires and all my friends. We were already married, OK? And so I said, So he got the tires. And he ruined the day he ever got those tires. They were the worst things he could have ever done. <laughs> but because I'm so loving, I didn't say it. He told you so. Ah, see, if you listen to me, we wouldn't be in this mess. I didn't say that. I just went. <laughs> Shouldn't listen to you, and I didn't say yeah. I didn't say that. I <laughs> so then we talked over, you know, we talked over. But sometimes, if he's determined he's gonna have it, <laughs> and sometimes it's good, and I'm glad he did make the decision. And sometimes it's bad, and I. <laughs> So I let him, because he is the head of the house. And sometimes he'll say to me, you think you're going to get this thing, and I'll give him my reasons for not getting it, and he'll go. You know, that makes sense. Let's not get it. See? So it takes two. But if he's the human, I'm getting it. It's so funny. I knew that when my son got married, they were going to be in the poor farm before long. Because he was a spender. He wasn't like my husband. We always kind of pinched Lincoln's neck. No, he wanted to spend Lincoln's blood. And so he was spending like crazy. And then he realized, I can't take care of the finance. But my daughter-in-law was great with that. So now, she takes care of the finance. He's happy. They're both happy. Praise the Lord. They're not in the poor farm. Because if he had done it, they would be in poverty at this time. But he saw in his wife something that he didn't have, the gift of finance. Smart man. That's why he's my son. <laughs> Now, when you say that you're going to let him do it, let him do it. Don't go, and then don't go tell your friends, you see, I let him. No, don't do that. <laughs> because then that kind of destroys his manhood. Now, here's the thing. Men have an ego that must be stroked. <laughs> Listen to me, including these young ladies that are not married. When you, when you get to the age where you're going to get married, you know, you, you say nice things. You look so nice today. They love that. <laughs> when my husband leaves the house, I say to him, Where'd he go? He said, I'm going to work. She ain't got home. Put your mama over here. So <laughs> oh, you look so handsome. And I tell him that he leaves the house. He's got a grin on his face. He's singing songs in the car because I've struck him. You need to learn how to stroke your husband. It may not be that he's wearing a suit. It may be fixing him his favorite meal. You ever seen that movie where she fixes his favorite meal and he, he cuts in the bathroom and he says, she's fixed my favorite meal, I'll tell you, she's going to kill me. She's killing me, she's going to kill me. <laughs> but she never had fixed his favorite meal. And so her friend said, you want to get back with your husband, fix him his favorite meal, so she does. And now he's scared to death to eat it because he's going to eat it. favorite meal, whether, it's your, whether you like it or not, maybe you don't like it, fix him his favorite meal. Do that for him. What if it's your favorite meal? 
it's really, really unhealthy. Yeah. Like what? Like oxtail. <laughs> 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 Once every six months. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. My husband used to love uh, liver. Yeah. And I'm a vegetarian. So fixing liver was like death for me. And here's how I would fix it.
just say, no, you'll put that in a little bow. <laughs> put that in a bow. Okay. In fact, I heard a band say, this is great, but that just wish we could just bow. The <laughs> As we do, we keep. We need to stop doing that. Keeping stuff that happened years ago. Even if they didn't apologize. It's hard for men to apologize. We'll apologize in a minute, but men, it's hard. Just don't keep, don't keep file cabinets. That's why they don't share with you. Because you got a nice little friend. Honey, let me tell you about my husband told me yesterday. <laughs> let me tell you about my husband. That's nobody's business. See, because you should be the cemetery for your husband. And he should be the cemetery for your stuff. Nobody should know what's going on. Nobody should know. Because when you violate them, then you're violating that sacred circle. There's a sacred circle that's only you, him, and God. And when you let somebody else in your business, then that person is in that circle and it's no longer a circle. Now, see, you can go out of your circle, into your children's circle, into your parents' circle, but they can't come into your circle because that's sacred. You understand? Now, I've talked a little bit too much. And I need to know what, if you have any questions. Uh, come on with the questions, Sister Lee and I are here to answer and help if necessary. In case I don't know, I'll look at you and we'll go and I'll go. I'll leave it. <laughs> any questions that you may have? Because I, I have, have a few more. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, everybody knows my husband, wonderful. And with the affirmation, I need maybe Jenny to translate this. And, you know, like the affirming and... I do it with all my heart, Robert, or like this. And you know what he says, Jenny? Okay, you have to translate that. Are you trying? Are you trying to tell me? Inu uto flat. Inu uto flat. Oh, okay. So he thinks, you know, because he's like, but he's in a teasing way. In a teasing way. Like, you know. what's the, like, tell a you're story. Like, like, what example? example? Oh, you know, sometimes it's the ice cream. Yeah, oh, you're handsome. Like, you know, I know what the one I'm going to Because, oh, you're just a saying cultural that. thing. You're pulling my leg. You're pulling my leg. Because it's a cultural yeah. thing. Yeah. Uh, I think it's a cultural thing. In the Philippines, we observe in our parents that they don't do that. And so it's kind of foreign. Yeah. But he's learning now. Oh, that's <laughs> wonderful, husband. But but that's the thing that I found out, you know that you we try I try to do that because I learned that I read books and they say that sure. you know <laughs> how to make your marriage work. And so I would say that in a very um, teasing way, though. You're not looking me or something. He just loves it. I'm telling you. Yeah, men does. love that kind of stuff. <laughs> they really do. I like the two people. Men really, they really like that kind of stuff. Yeah. Sometimes we grow up with it and our children grow up with it. Yeah, yeah. Does it make does it make a difference? I mean, I don't, in Tagalog, I don't know. So, is there a difference between saying, "Oh, you're so handsome," or versus, "Oh, I think you are so handsome," or is it the same? It's the same. It's different. You know, it's different. It's different. Yeah, because you know that song, you are so beautiful <laughs> to me. Yeah, okay. yes, it's personal. Yeah, it's yeah, it's pretty, yeah. <coughs> you may not think my husband's handsome, but as long as I think he's there handsome, you go. Yeah. And that's yeah. how he is. So yeah. that, I was wondering if that's maybe, <coughs> what, yeah. I don't know, but what are you? But, look, but I'm glad you're doing that. <laughs> I'm glad you're doing that. I'll tell you what. And we need to do that to our husbands, because there's some little, little Susie out there who would tell us. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we were at a church. <laughs> Let me tell you two instances. We were at a church, and um, I was sitting next to a lady, and it was my husband's first day. He was being introduced. And so they marched in, and I said to the lady next to me, <laughs> I said, oh, he's a hunk. <laughs> oh, he's so handsome. 
Jesus. And I noticed that she was like, oh, I'm going to have to go get it. She got so mad at me. She turned around and she said, don't talk about my pastor. I thought she knew who I was. So I said to her, If you hear anybody else talking, you can get them for me. But I did have a woman come up to me and say, by the end of this year, your husband will be mine. Oh, oh my. And what did you say? I got this itch. Yes, 
pushing me to the yeah. point of the bridge. That's right. Love your husbands. Treat them like they're wonderful people. And then if they don't treat you right, say, you know what? You need to treat me right. You need to tell them. You need to tell them. If he raises his voice at you, say, you know, I don't like that. Now, don't tell him that he's raising his voice. Because <laughs> 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 he'll raise it even higher. <clears throat> but I heard somebody say today, football is keeping our family apart. Football should be a family thing even though you hate it. Because he loves it. Figure it out. On Sunday, where do you think he's sitting? In front of the TV, watching the Cowboys or whoever he's going to watch. And, and just... Listen, I couldn't, I didn't know football. I know one time my husband threw the, the remote through the ball and, and I said, oh no, it's in your second. <laughs> and my husband said, honey, it's the same church. You're supposed to catch it. <laughs> <laughs> but I learned about football. And so now I sit with him and he'll say, look at that. Did you see that? That's elementary football. And I go, I know. Ah, <laughs> uh, no, but I will not say that. Or I'll say, you see that? You see that pass? And he'll go, you see that? And I'll go, yeah. <laughs> oh, I see that. I saw that. What was that? <laughs> when I want to talk to him, I don't wait till football. That's not a good time. No. <laughs> I'll see my husband when the football is over. That's what he likes. That's what he likes. And sometimes he has to watch, watch mushy movies with me. I love those old movies. A fair to remember, you know, where she gets run over by the taxi. And she's paralyzed. And he comes and he sees her on the couch and she's got a little pickle. I love those kind of movies. He watches it with me. You got me with the man you are in. Stuff like that. I'll watch three or four times. Yes. He'll sit there though. I'll watch football with him or anything else he wants to do. Sometimes I give him the remote. I let him have the remote. He thinks he's gonna have it with that remote. He says, remoting? And it drives me crazy because I sometimes I say, now which movie do you watch? He's <laughs> got two movies going on. How do you know? <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Those kind of things, you know, you, you got to learn your husband. You got to learn the ins and outs of your husband and, and the things that he likes and the things that you and He needs to learn what you don't like. Honey, I don't like for you to stick your socks in the ball in dirty clothes hand. I had to tell my husband that he thought he was being. So he'd take his dirty socks off and put it inside the oven. Yeah, but I gotta take them apart to put them in the washing machine. I hated that. And so finally I said, honey, could you not do that? Oh, they don't like that. So he doesn't do that anymore. Every now and then he forgets and I go, uh, oops. Just things that you need to talk to each other about that women forget that they need to say. something for the single ones uh, on a perfect husband. Uh, looking for a perfect looking husband. Looking for a perfect husband. The, the first one. thing that you have to look for is make sure you're old enough to do that. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of, I, I've got so many young girls coming to me, they're 17. That ain't the time to choose a husband. That ain't. You've got the whole world to see things to do, places to go, things to conquer, do that first before you even think about getting married. Because once you get married and have kids, it's over. <laughs> well, you can't go on a plane because it's two of you. <laughs> Just think about that. Give yourself time. Give yourself time. 
If he doesn't love the Lord, put him to the curb. Because you can't change them. The Lord has to change them. And if they say to you, you have to go to church today, that's the red flag. You're out of here. Don't do that. Get your education. Get your degree. Get your rival. Do those kind of things. Once you get that, you're not going to be able to do all of that. Now, if you have a friend and he likes to do this to you, red flag, because if he does that to you now, later on he's going to come from here. If he pushes you and you end up over there, church for me and he says, are you kidding me? I ain't going to that church. They come to church with you. They act like they're loving it. And I've seen this happen. And when they come to church, hallelujah, praise the Lord. They get baptized. You get married to them. And they don't come back. So you got to give it time. With every, with, with every kind of relationship, you got to give it time. Mm -hmm. Keep yourself pure. Keep yourself pure. Because it's hard. I tell you a secret. It's not a secret. I share it when I need to share it. We sent our kids to school. Our sons brought us back. Please, my daughter brought me back a grandson. And we were pastoring a church of almost a thousand. My balloon burst. And there's the pastor's daughter. It was very tough for me at first because I forgot that the Lord loves that young man more than I could ever And I just couldn't pray for him. In fact, I dreamt of running over him with my car. <laughs> and then I would get out and I would go, you're not dead yet? <laughs>
She may not be the best Christian in the world, but she's still going to church. So I thank the Lord for that church. I think about another church we were at, I don't think that would have happened, but this church did. So even if a young girl in your congregation gets pregnant, you got to love her. Amen. You hold her. You got to. Because the baby is not the sin. It's what she did. It's the sin. And help her to get through it. And let her know that God says if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive and cleanse us from all our righteousness. And that's important. But you want to keep pure? Because it doesn't say that when you have that baby, he's going to stay around. He may not. He may not. He may even say, it ain't boy, because I've seen that. So young girls, bring him home so mom and dad can meet him. Amen. Amen. <laughs> because when this young man came to my house, I said to my husband, She should spend time with. It was too late. Your parents will know. And if they say, honey, don't spend time with this guy, believe it, they know. Unless Gabriel has come before you and said, This is the guy I want you to marry. <laughs> Trust me. The Lord has sent me to death. And Gabriel is standing before you. Otherwise, <laughs> Gabriel's the only one that can tell you, or he can say to you, Brooks said, I thought I'm one woman. And he has anything else? Well, I have a question, particularly since this is the month that the women's ministry is looking at abuse. What, what kind of counsel do you give to women who may find themselves in abusive situations, particularly if they're married? Mm -hmm. The Lord says you can stay with him if you can tolerate him. I mean, it's not dangerous to you. But let me tell you, I think I'm getting better. So if he's hitting you, he's knocking you across the room, your life, your life is in danger. Your life is in danger. You need to get out of here. You find shelter somewhere. Now, I'm not saying that that's the end of your marriage. Your marriage needs help. So you need to find counseling. And that counseling doesn't mean that you can't be sin. Some people think, oh, counseling. Yeah. Everybody needs counseling of some kind or another. Now, if he doesn't want to go to counseling, then you need to go somewhere where you can get counseling to rebuild your self-esteem, to rebuild yourself. And then you may have to leave. That's life. You may have to leave. If you feel like your life's not in danger and you, you know, you say, I'll stay. It's dangerous for you to stay. And it doesn't mean, no, no, let me tell you. See how can I say this? We have so much abuse in our church. Mm -hmm. So much. We have pastors abusing their wives, elders abusing their wives, elders' wives abusing their husbands. So it's a two-way thing. It's not just men abusing women, it's women abusing men. Two. If you have a women's ministries, a thing here at the church. There are some things. Ten minutes? How much have you been standing there hearing? <laughs> um, if you have a women's ministry, stand here in the church, in the back of the stall of your bathroom, both bathrooms, men and women, it's called Breaking the Silence, and you can get it from admin source. The little pamphlets that you put on the back of the mm. stall, because nobody's, you're not going to say, who needs breaking the silence? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <it's not> <laughs> <laughs> but if you put it behind those bathroom doors, somebody will pick it up, and they'll 
have information that will help them or save their lives. And not just on the women's bathroom, do it in the men's bathroom too. Because I can't tell you how many men are being abused. Yes, Mama. And fortunately, here in the, Houston, the greater Houston area, uh, there are some excellent resources and facilities all over town, not only the Houston Area Women's Crisis Center. There are some in Pasadena, there are no, and that one in Pasadena is also faith-based. So there are some great resources. Nobody should be abused and not feel that they don't have somewhere to go. Absolutely. And say you're not abused, but your children are. They need help. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, Mama. Thank you for sharing the stew out of your children. That's wrong. That's wrong. Um, anything else? We've got about eight minutes. Yes. On a on a tragic happen somewhere, there's also emotional abuse. And when a girl plan will confide to you, what do you do? It's like sometimes abuse we think is limited only on physical. But there are women out there, and it happens in, it's called emotional abuse. What there, are, there are places that they can go for help. There are places where they can go for help. Um, I'm not here, but Wilma's here. And Wilma can help you with that, uh, with uh, emotional abuse. Wilma can help you. You're very blessed to have Wilma. Because she, cause she Amen. knows Amen. so many resources in there. You're very blessed. Um, next year, August 2, 3, and 4, uh, 2013, we're having our first union-wide women's ministries retreat. And it is supposed to be in your paper, but mm, it's supposed to be in the record. Did we get the record? We should. It came out in August. Came out in August. Do you have one with you? I, I have to look. <laughs> Let me see the cover. Is this uh, That's the one. Yeah. And um, near near the front, there's a women's ministry. It's got purple flowers. Registration starts in November of this year. You'll see another thing coming out in the record. Um, but I've asked Jenny to write my theme song for me. Was sitting at the piano, she was singing that Sabbath song that she wrote. Uh, and so the Lord said, Why don't you ask Jenny? So, uh, I tried to listen to that. But um, thank you, Jenny. And so and she's got the song. And I said, Did you get a copyright? And she said, No, yeah, that's a copy. There you go. It's <laughs> Registration starts in November, and the next one that comes out, it will give you all the information. You're going to register through the office, through the union office, uh, but you'll have to call the hotel on your own. Uh, it is, uh, we're going to be at the Embassy Suites in Frisco, and ladies, it's wonderful. The convention thing is we're smack next door to the um, hotel, and we don't have to go outside. And so, um, I need everybody to come, and I'm, where, where's the pastor's wife? Ah, pastor's wife. If you bring me five people, five women, register five women, I will pay for yours. <laughs> but we'd love for you, and I'm looking forward to having you come. Um, ladies, we're going to discuss these issues with men. I may not have covered everything, but feel free to speak out when you... You've been very quiet. You haven't really spoken out. Yes. Thank <laughs> you. 
what? Because in, early, in our early marriage, my husband was you and I was your husband. But now I've lived with him so long that any little mess just drives me crazy. My grandchildren and my children call him the Darth Vader of cleanliness. <laughs> Before I go visit my, my son, who lives only about five miles from where we live, his wife said to me, Mom, before you and Dad come over, can you call me about an hour before? And so I said, sure. And so, you know, we'll say we're going to go over to Grips. And so I said, hey, we got to give him an hour. He said, an hour? I said, an hour. So I'll call her. And so we got over there one day, and little buddy, we call him little buddy, that's buddy the fourth. <laughs> little buddy said, boy, Grandma, so glad you called. Because when Mom hung up, she said, Dad's coming! And they were running around the house throwing stuff in the closet. And under the bed was Dad and Mom were coming. And, 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 and that's just the way my husband is. When I get home on Friday from work, my husband's job, you know, my husband's office is closed at now. But when I get home, my whole house is clean. I have not mopped the floor in 42 years. <laughs> because I said, my husband said, you know, it's okay, but I said, oh, honey, I struck it. I said, oh, honey, you came before so nice. And I went like this.
Oh, they're back. <laughs> Give us two minutes. Two minutes. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.